I'm going to show you how to explode this model in SketchUp, take all of the materials from the SketchUp file, import them into Revit, and then create the same textures and the same materials in this Revit model for our Enscape view. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials and resources, as well as four hours of ad-free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there. The first thing we need to do is go back to SketchUp and open this SketchUp model. So step one is to explode this model completely. So if we right click and go explode, you're going to see that it does explode it into its very many different components, but you also want to make sure that you've exploded it completely. So if you right click it again, click explode, this is going to explode it even further. And as you can see, we can keep on doing this and we want to keep on doing this until it's grayed out, which means there's nothing more to explode. But now what we can do is access every single material and layer. So what we need to do is create a new layer for each material inside of this model. And to check what materials are currently being used, we can go over to the material tab. At the moment, I can't see it. It's not shown. So I'm going to go to window and then go to default tray and then you can see materials. So if we click on that, it's gonna bring up materials. So you can see that there are materials here, but these are all of the SketchUp materials. So I wanna show you just what's inside the model. So if I click on here, you can see the drop down menu. And if we scroll up, the very top is going to show in model. So these are all of the materials that are inside of the model. So if we count these, you've got five, 10, 12. So we're gonna need 12 different layers. So I'm going to create 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. What we're going to do is rename these. We're going to check what the materials are called and we're going to rename them to what those materials are called. So you can see you've got the metal corrugated shiny. So I'm just going to change layer 1 to metal corrugated shiny. And I think that might have been shiny 1. So let's change that. Then you've got aluminium the next one and so forth i'll come back to you once i've done all of them all right so now we need to change the layer of each material in this model it's easier than it sounds what you can do is select all of the materials assigned to a face in the sketchup model so what i'm going to do is right click one of the materials select all with same material and that's going to select everything with the same material and there's 210 faces so at least we don't have to select each of those faces and then I'm going to change the layer. I'm going to make this wood grain. So now that's all assigned to the wood grain model. And then we can go on and select the next thing. So this is the, what I would think would be the metal corrugated shiny. And as you can see there, that's what it is. So I'm going to go right click, select all with the same material, change the layer to the metal corrugated gold is actually what it was. I've changed the layer name of that. I'm going to come back to you once I've finished changing the layer of all of these. That should be everything on the right layer, but what we can do is hide away each layer and then we can see if there's anything left. So I'm just going to go back to layer zero. I'm going to hide away each layer. If there's anything left over, what we can do is change the layer for that, but there is nothing left. So what we can do is again, unhide everything and move on. All right, so now if you wanna use these same materials from the actual SketchUp model and not something else, you have to export these materials out from SketchUp. So what you can do is where you've got the in model materials, you can right click one of them and go export texture image. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for each and every one of these materials and save them in the project files. So then you can just use them for your project and export all of these. All right, so now we can export this out and this next stage involves using AutoCAD. It's very simple stuff. If you've never used AutoCAD before, it's very simple. Thing is, if you're using Revit, you might have had some experience or exposure to, Re uh, to AutoCAD before. But what we're going to do is go to File, Export, 3D Model. So rather than saving this out as a SketchUp file, we're gonna save it as a .dwg, an AutoCAD file. Save this to the correct spot. I'm going to go to Project Files and save this. First, you wanna check the options and we wanna uncheck everything except for faces. And you'll want to export this out as the latest version you've got. So I'm gonna do a AutoCAD 2013. Okay, hit export. And now we're going to move into AutoCAD. All right, so I've just double clicked on my jukebox file and we'll open up AutoCAD. With the AutoCAD file open, we wanna select everything by pressing Control A. 
and that's going to select everything there and we want to come up to object color and then from the drop down menu we're going to select by layer now all you need to do is save this over the top of what you've already got so you're going to use that same jukebox file and now we can move into revit so now that we're back in revit we're going to go to file new and we're going to open a family using a furniture template so i'm going to go to the english family templates folder and we've got the metric furniture i'm going to open this up and then we can import by going to insert we're going to import our cad and we're going to change the file type to dwg we're going to find our jukebox now i'm just going to manually change the origin so that we can specify where that is you can see that the selection points way off anyways so we're going to have to change this I'm going to just move this from the corner holding shift to the center point of these reference lines so that way when we import this into our project we're going to be moving it around from here and not as you just saw moving it around from some unknown arbitrary point so i'm going to open up a 3d view of this i'm going to turn on the shaded mode and you can already see that it's applied those layer colors from autocad or from sketchup really and so what we're wanting to do is change the layer colors to have materials assigned to them all right so what we're going to do now may seem a little counterintuitive but we're going to change all of the line colors to gray and this might take a little while to do but by doing so it's going to make the entire model we're going to make this family just a generic gray color and we can then assign the materials in our actual project and that's really the only way this is going to work so i'll get back to you once i've changed this all to gray so now we're going to open the materials the material browser and we're going to delete all of the materials that are in here and we're going to create new ones for the materials that we want inside of our project so i'm going to go down to the bottom here and click create new material for example i'll call this wood grain we're not going to assign any materials to it in here we'll do that once we import this into our project so i'm going to use my sketchup file as a reference just so i can write these all in so i'm going to call this one the metal corrugated shiny and i'm going to create a new material for all of the layers that we've got inside of sketchup all right so now i'm going to click ok we're going to click ok on here you'll see that this is now entirely gray so now we can save this out as a Revit family and we can use this for any project now. We'll save it under here, call it Jukebox. What we can do is click load into project and we're gonna load this into our project file. If you've still got the one in there, you can just get rid of that one and we'll use this one now. So now that we've got this imported, what we can do is change the materials of it so that it's not gray. This is what this has all been leading up to. So now we can go to the manage tab up the top here, object styles again, go back over to imported objects. So now for example, if we wanna load in our wood grain texture, we can do that by clicking on here, finding wood grain, the same material that we've imported from here and it's got the default stuff on it. We're going to apply that exported image and I believe that's that Elm, Elm 45H67. So let's open this up. There's our texture. Click apply and click okay. Now we can change the metal corrugated gold and we can find where that is. So metal corrugated, this is just the metal corrugated shiny. We're gonna change the image to be that shiny gold one. We'll click apply and click okay. I'm just gonna click apply and see if these are updating inside of Enscape. So now as you can see, it's loaded in that texture, but however, the sides of it are looking a little bit weird. So there's something going on with the actual texture. It's not a foolproof way of loading these textures into uh, Revit from SketchUp and when we exported the shiny corrugated metal that hasn't come out with a color It's just given us a generic corrugated shiny texture So we're gonna have to find something else for that Probably gonna have to find just all new materials for it Sometimes it will work and it will look nice like this other times it won't That's just the issues of trying to work across different programs and so now rather than using the exported materials from SketchUp because they were pretty useless we can still use and have control over the materials by using the Revit materials inside of Revit or we can find whatever textures we want online as well so I'm going to click on the wood grain for example I'm going to go over to the graphics tab and make sure I check use render render appearance open up this asset browser down the bottom here and I'm going to find a wood texture and if we come down to the side here, this might look a little bit better. 
just gonna find this walnut might look nice. Press this replaces the current asset in the editor with this asset. And you can see that that's changed the material to that wood grain. So now I can get out of that. If we apply this and we have a look in our Enscape view, click apply. You should see that material update and there we go. So you've got that walnut. And again, the side of this is looking a little bit janky. And so that's not got to do with the texture. That's got to do with the way this was modeled. What we're going to do is now do that same process for the rest of this jukebox. So we're going to go to manage object styles, imported objects for the aluminium, find the same aluminium material that we had earlier, go to the appearance tab, open up the asset browser and look for an aluminium or aluminium, whatever they call it. We can use this one here press that little button to the side there and apply that. Click OK. <laughs> you can see that this process is a little bit um, monotonous and it goes on, but it's really the only way to take a model from SketchUp with all the materials and import that into Revit. Once that's done, once you've got the materials set in in the model, then you've got it all inside of Enscape as well. And you can see I've had to do some custom materials to it. I've added in my own kind of anodized blue and I've done a chrome trim on it here and it's got its own uh, wood grain to it. It's a bit hard to see, not in the light. But yeah, how much better does that look compared to the original model that we imported from SketchUp, which is just gray. We're gonna place this just in the back corner. There we go, that looks bloody awesome. I'm glad we put in that effort to do that because that looks way better than it did before. In the next lesson, we're going to do a complete overview of the family editor in Revit, and we're gonna go over all of the basics of creating families. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials, and resources, as well as four hours of ad-free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there.